published 0709 EDT, the 5th of September 2017 updated 0709 EDT, the 5th of September 2017 Landlords and letting agents have been under the government's BDI for some time now but with the much anticipated ban on letting agent fees still to materialize, it's easy to get stung when signing up to a new lease. Not only are there myriad pitfalls just waiting for you to fall into as a novice renter, there is seemingly endless paperwork, financial hoops to jump through and tests to pass before you're even allowed to hand over in excess of a grant for the privilege of moving into your new digs. For every hundred people whose landlords are a dream, there's a horror story of mold spawning over the walls, deposits stocked for fictitious damage and broken boilers left untended for weeks. Do your homework it's worth knowing what your rights as a tenant are it's worth knowing what your rights as a tenant or from what your landlord is allowed to to ask you for including bank statements and ID to how to get your deposit back when you move out. To help get you started especially if you're new to the process we asked Dan Wilson Craw, director of Pressure Group Generation Rent, to outline his top tips for renters looking for a new lease. Dan Wilson Craw set up Generation Rent after frustration as a tenant himself budget first once you decide you want to move or if your landlord or housemaid has unkindly made that decision for you, work out the likely time scale and your budget, if it's your decision, you will need to serve sufficient notice to your landlord so check your tenancy agreement to see how flexible they're likely to be, it's a highly stressful process so y'all need to decide how long y'all want to give yourself to secure a new place and move out of the current one, y'all want to minimize the time you're paying rent on two homes or four forking out on a new deposit before you've got the old one back. When figuring out your budget remember y'all need to be able to afford the monthly rent and also all the one-off costs of moving, including deposit, agent fees and the first month's rent. Tell work give your employer a heads up so that they can expect a reference to fill out, as well as the possibility of you needing time off at short notice to view properties, pack, move or clean, dot and work out if you need a guarantor if references will be difficult to prepare or rent is likely to be more than 2.5 times your income, you may need to find a guarantor. This could be a parent or a friend. Also try to dig out the inventory for your current home, making sure everyone is present and correct will help you get your deposit back. Then start your search online if you can, take some time to research online what is available for your budget before leaping into setting up viewings. If it turns out all the affordable places are on the other side of town, take a trip over there to get a feel for the area and its parks, shops, transport links, etc. Also decide what are must-haves and what you can live without, a garden, a gas hob, extra storage space do your would-be housemates agree. Visit the local letting agent see what letting agents there are locally and if any charge especially high fees. The average for two people is 400 pounds, but can go as high as 800 pounds. Some areas have agents and their typical fees listed here. Fees are generally non-negotiable and rarely reflect the actual costs involved for the agent. This is one reason why the government has said it wants to ban them. Fees are generally non-negotiable and rarely reflect the actual costs involved for the agent. Start trawling round properties now the hard part arranging viewings. You can normally do these on evenings and weekends, but some agents can set them during the day, especially if local demand is high. Registering with individual agents can get you advance notice of properties becoming available, but if you see a nice flat on a portal you'll normally be able to phone up directly and book a viewing within 24 hours. Nice places can go super quick so it can be disheartening to spend days phoning up and getting nowhere, but new homes will pop up. When you do get a viewing you might be there with several other prospective tenants so be prepared to make a quick decision, before you show up, have a good idea of what the holding deposit and other upfront fees are it is the agent's legal responsibility to display these, which will make it easier to decide on the spot. At the property, be nosy nice places can go super quick so it can be disheartening to spend days phoning up and getting nowhere does the shower get hot as the fridge in working order are the doors and windows secure but openable ask questions, will all the furniture stay as the electricity on a meter or prepaid if the place ticks all your must-haves make an offer, either in person or by phone, the agent will ask you for your employment details and to pay a holding deposit normally a week's rent and you should get a receipt for this. Also ask to see the agreement so that you can check what you're signing up for, they should email this straight over. Plan the move while the letting agent or landlord pursues your references and credit checks, plan the move. Do you need a van can you shift everything on a single day don't be afraid to negotiate also use this time to request changes to the tenancy agreement if you're uncomfortable with anything. While many agents and landlords will be accommodating, tenants have very little bargaining power in this situation, especially if there are others who would take the property. Agents can get rude at this stage, but remain patient and keep a record of any poor practice in case you want to make a complaint. All agents are required to be members of a redress scheme, which can act if they mess tenants around. 
Inventory, inventory, inventory When the landlord is happy that you're a trustworthy tenant, it is time to sign the agreement, pay the deposit and first month's rent and get the keys. You should also receive an inventory of your new home, which will list furniture, fittings and existing damage. Take a look at the property yourself and make a list of any damage that I sent on there, and take photos. Email the agent or landlord with these so that you don't get charged for them when you move out. Now you can start moving your belongings in. Also, broadband takes absolutely ages to connect, so get that ball rolling. Moving out back at your newly emptied old place, check the inventory if you found it for any discrepancies that you need to remedy or explain, notify the utility companies that you're leaving and give the property a final clean. Some tenancy agreements will stipulate using professional cleaners, some will demand that at least the carpets are shampooed, so set some money aside for this too. Know your rights once you hand back your keys, you should get a decision on your deposit and the money owed back within 10 days. This is because landlords in England and Wales must now secure tenants' deposits under an approved tenancy deposit protection scheme. Landlords who collect deposits, or agents who do so on their behalf, must join a statutory scheme to ensure tenants get their deposit, or part of it, back. If they have kept a property in good condition, find out what you need to know here. And finally now you're in your new home. There are still some final bits of admin to do update your bank, register to vote and contact the council to get a council tax exemption. These can wait while you have a well-earned celebration, but don't leave them too long.